My name is Doug Boyd, director of the Louis B. Nunn Center for Oral History at the University of Kentucky Libraries. One of the most exciting developments in oral history and archives today is the fact that people can discover and access these important oral history interviews from all over the world. We receive reference requests every single day. Recently, we received a request from a researcher in Italy who was requesting an interview from our World War II veterans collection, a four-hour oral history interview with an individual named Marshall Webb, who was from Campbellsville, Kentucky, recorded in 1986 by Colonel Arthur L. Kelly. The online description indicated that in this interview, Webb recalled memories of fighting in a battle in a small town in Italy called Tremensuoli. It just so happened that this researcher was writing a novel set in Tremensuoli during World War II. And the, and the little town is called Tremensoli. That's where we were at for roughly three months. Mm -hmm. we, we pushed off from Tremensoli, and at that time, I was a scout. Mission accomplished. We connected this researcher with this important interview. But we soon learned that this was no ordinary reference request. The researcher did not just want any oral history interview about the Battle of Tremensuoli. He specifically wanted the interview with Marshall Webb. Because on March 30th, 1944, Marshall Webb from Campbellsville, Kentucky, off fighting in a small town in Italy, half a world from home, carved his name on a wall in an alley in Tremensuoli, Italy. This researcher had discovered a mysterious name and date carved in a wall by an American soldier in 1944. We were able to connect this researcher to a recorded voice, to a meaningful life story. Before, all we knew of Marshall Webb was what we could glean from that 1986 interview. Doing some background research, I discovered he passed away several years ago. But I was able to connect with Opal Webb, his widow. I drove down to Campbellsville, Kentucky, and I got to spend the day with Opal and two of their children. They brought his photographs and papers, told many touching stories. One thing we talked a lot about was Marshall Webb's poetry. During the 1986 interview, Marshall Webb actually read a poem that he had written, coincidentally, about the Battle of Tremensuoli. Somewhere in Italy, on the 11th of May, we waited for our orders one cool, cloudy day. As I knelt down by my buddy, he knew it was his time. Thank God we won our victory. We hold the gust of flying. You can talk of all your battles, and history it will tell. But the one fought at Trimmon Soli was sure a bloody hell. The family shared with me more than 80 handwritten poems that Marshall had written during the war. The photographs, papers, and poems have all been added to the archive and special collections here at the University of Kentucky Libraries. Together with the 1986 interview, we now have incredible documentation of one individual's profound experiences during the war. How many people have walked past the carving of Mr. Webb's name in Tremensuoli since that day in 1944? How many of them stopped for a moment and wondered, who was this man? Because we interviewed Marshall Webb, because we have archived this interview, and now have added poetry, photos, and papers, we can provide a compelling answer to that question. Not only has the Nunn Center created an online space where this researcher could discover the Webb interview existed in our archive, We've developed an online system called OMS, which has transformed the way our interviews are being used online. The Nunn Center has been collecting and archiving oral history interviews for over 40 years, and we now have over 9,000 interviews on a wide variety of topics. I'm so proud that we're able to continue this tradition of recording and preserving life stories, leading the way in providing digital access to oral history interviews, and making sure that individual stories, like Marshall Webb's story, becomes part of the global historical record.